In regards to our announcement last night regarding the high altitude surveillance balloon, I'm not going to have much new information to provide other than to say that the North American Aerospace Defense Command continues to monitor it closely. While we won't get into specifics in regards to the exact location, I can tell you that the balloon continues to move eastward and is currently over the center of the continental United States. Again, we currently assess that the balloon does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground at this time and will continue to review, uh, excuse me, continue to monitor and review options. Finally, Secretary Austin will host a bilateral meeting today here in the Pentagon with Australian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense Richard Marles. The Secretary looks forward to discussing bilateral defense cooperation and our mutual security efforts within the Indo-Pacific region and beyond. A full readout of the engagement will post later today to defense.gov. And with that, we'll go ahead and move to your questions. We'll start with AP, Tara Kopp. Hi, Pat. Thank you for doing this. Um, China has said this is just a weather balloon that has veered off course. Why is the Pentagon convinced that this is a surveillance balloon? And then can you give us a little bit more on the status of the balloon? You said it's in the central, of the, uh, cent central U.S. What state? Do you have any guidance for people as they see this balloon or they're trying to photograph it or maybe try and interfere with it? Sure. Uh, thanks, Tara. Uh, so, first of all, we are aware of the PRC's statement. Um, however, the fact is uh, we know that it's a surveillance balloon, uh, and I'm not going to be able to be more specific than that. Uh, we do know that the balloon has violated U.S. airspace and international law, uh, which is unacceptable. And so we've conveyed this directly to the PRC at multiple levels. Uh, and in terms of specific locations, uh, I'm not going to be able to go into specific locations again, other than to say it's moving eastward at this time. Yeah, you had a follow up. As people start to see the balloon, do you have any guidance for, should they try not to interfere, not photograph? Uh, so the balloon is currently assessed to be at about 60,000 feet. So again, well above uh, the, the range of civilian air traffic or where civilian uh, air traffic would normally fly. Um, uh, certainly aware that there are cameras, uh, you know, civilian owned commercial cameras that could spot this balloon um, in, in terms of um, guidance to folks. Again, this is something that NORAD is closely monitoring. Uh, we do assess at this time that it does not pose a physical threat, as I mentioned, uh, to people on the ground. Uh, so we'll just leave it at that. Jennifer. General Ryder, who is controlling this balloon right now? Uh, again, we, we know that this is a Chinese balloon, but beyond that, I'm not going to have specifics. But is it, you say that it's moving eastward and it's over the continental U.S., it's, cha it's not over Montana anymore. Is the Chinese government controlling the movement of the balloon, or is it just floating with uh, airstreams? Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, so I'm not going to go into uh, any specific intelligence that we, we may have. Again, uh, we, we know this is a Chinese balloon um, and that it has the ability to maneuver. Um, but I'll just leave it at that. And once it's over a body of water, will you shoot it down? Uh, again, right now we're monitoring the situation closely, uh, reviewing options, but beyond that, I'm not going to have any additional information. Let me go to Tony. One quickie on the, uh, on, the, on the balloon. Can you confirm the photos that are out there that this is not the man in the moon and that is the actual balloon? Uh, thanks, Tony. So i uh, certainly aware of photos being posted online. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into the business of confirming uh, whether or not those are, you know, where those photos come from. Again, I can tell you that the U.S. government, NORAD, is monitoring this closely, uh, and we will continue to review options. How close was the U.S. to ordering, a, was the president to ordering a shoot down of the balloon? Yeah, so again, I'm not going to get into uh, discussions, internal discussions within the White House again. Uh, right now, we assess that there is no threat, physical threat or military threat to people on the ground. So we're continuing to monitor. Um, you know, then we'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Let me go to Janie and then we'll go to Rio. Thanks, Janitor. Welcome to home. Uh, I have two questions. Come on. Okay. In response to Secretary Austin's uh, recent remarks that more U.S. strategic assets will come to the South Korea, North Korea warned of stronger provocations in the near future. What is your comment on this? 
Um, well, it's certainly not surprising, uh, given North Korea's track record of making uh, bellicose statements. Again, what we're focused on is on preserving peace, security, and stability in the Indo-Pacific region. And so Secretary Austin's visit was an opportunity to, again, reaffirm our strong and close alliance with the Republic of Korea. And so that will remain our focus, is on working with Korea, South Korea and other nations in the region to deter aggression. Uh, and ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific. One more. Uh, South Korea has announced that it will be a uh, test uh, high-powered uh, monster ballistic missile with a nuclear warhead level. Is the, this is a defense against North Korea's nuclear warhead. How do you agree this? I'm sorry, Jane, I missed the first part of your question. Can you repeat that? South Korea has announced uh, that it will be uh, a test a uh, high-powered monster ballistic missile with the uh, war, nuclear warhead levels. This yeah. is the, the, the defense yeah, I don't, against I don't the North have North anything North. on that. I'd, I'd refer you to the government of South Korea. Thank you. Let me go to Rio, and then I'll come back over here. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, two questions on the Chinese balloon. So there is a speculation that this balloon flew over Japanese airspace before reaching the U.S. continental U.S. Can you confirm that? Um, I've seen those press reports. Again, uh, as we acknowledged in our statement uh, that we posted last night, we have seen uh, this type of balloon activity elsewhere um, before. But again, uh, I'm not going to get into intelligence uh, and I'm not going to have any further information to provide. Uh, secondly, uh, how will this incident affect the Secretary's future engagement with Chinese counterparts to maintain the open lines of the communication? Uh, I think we've been very clear that we're always open to maintaining an open line of communication uh, with uh, the PRC, uh, and in that regard, nothing has changed. Thank you. Let me go to Phil, and then I'll come over to Kasim. Is, is the position of the balloon classified? Uh, Phil, right now, uh, what we're not going to do is get into a hour-by-hour -hour location of the balloon. Again, we're monitoring it closely. Uh, I, as I mentioned right now, it's over the center of the continental United States. That's about as specific as I'm going to get. But I understand it might be inconvenient, but does the public not have a right to know if uh, the balloon is The public is over certainly the has the ability to look up in the sky and, and see where the balloon is. Thank you. Kasim? General, you said the uh, balloon is maneuverable. Uh, so d does that mean that it's not drifting? Uh, so the balloon is maneuverable. Um, clearly, it's, in, it's violated U.S. airspace. Uh, and again, we've communicated that fact to the PRC. Uh, if possible, can you tell us if the balloon, when it enters the, entered the U.S. airspace, has it changed its course in any way? The balloon has changed its course, uh, which is, again, why we're monitoring it. Uh, but that's about as specific as I can get. Thank you. Go to Matt. So you've said at this point um, the balloon doesn't pose to have any to pose any risks to citizens. How is it that the U.S. can assess that, given that the balloon is at such an altitude, you know, without actually getting eyes on it up close and assessing the equipment that's on board? Um, and secondly, um, are there any alternatives being considered to shooting it down? Is there any option to take this balloon out of the sky intact to maybe get a better look at that equipment? Yeah, so, so again, uh, this is a surveillance balloon uh, hover, you know, operating at about 60,000 feet. Um, clearly, you know, we did a, a very close assessment in terms of uh, what it's doing. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, military commanders have assessed that there is no physical or military threat to people on the ground. Um, and so uh, in that regard, we'll continue to monitor. Uh, in terms of way ahead, we will continue to review options, but I'm not going to have anything further to provide on that. So thank you. Ma'am. Thank you, Pat. Uh, you said that this is uh, violating our airspace, so why not take it down? Yeah, so, uh, you know, clearly as we assess options um, and considering the, the size of the payload on this, uh, looking at the potential for debris uh, and the impact on civilians on the ground or property damage. Again, uh, running through the, the various factors and looking at uh, in terms of does it pose a potential risk uh, to 
people while in the air. And right now, as I mentioned, we, we assess that it does not pose a risk to people on the ground as it currently is traversing the continental United States. And so out of an abundance of caution, uh, cognizant of the potential impact to civilians on the ground uh, from a debris field, uh, right now we're going to continue to monitor and review options.